Hey friends, in Isaiah 41, he tells the people to fear not because they are uh, the chosen people of God. In verse number eight through 10, it says, but you Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from his farthest corner saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Well, that is the most um, incredible and encouraging of promises. Now, um, Isaiah had quite frequently in the previous uh, 40 chapters given them uh, many rebukes. Uh, rebukes to Israel for their rebellion and rebukes and warnings and prophecies about uh, the surrounding nations. But he always comes back um, to give the people faithful reminders uh, of the promises of God. Uh, it's like, I think, in Timothy that uh, Paul had recorded, he goes, even when we're faithless, he is faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And so he says, Israel, you know, my servant, to be a servant of God is the highest of honors. You know, in our current culture, we think of being a servant as somehow demeaning, uh, because you have to do what someone else wants you to do. And we think, oh, well, I want to be free and free is me doing whatever I want and other people serving me. But do you realize that we are most free when we see that God has called us to be his servants? That we're not free just when we do whatever we want, but real freedom is to be his servant to know that he has called us, bought us, chosen us, and, uh, and that we're, our freedom is experiential when we do his will, when we do what pleases him. Because when, when all we do is do what we want to do, that leads to heartache and bondage. But as the servants of the Lord, and as we do his will, and as we... Um, yield to our ourselves of what he wants to do through us, we are the most blessed of people. We have been chosen, servants and chosen. Now think about this one, because whenever we think about being chosen, we're like, well, I chose God. And I'm like, well, you know, we're never really the starting point. He chose us. When we were running from him, he pursued us. He empowered us to entrust him and believe in him. Now, I think it's uh, uh, a mistake to develop uh, all kinds of theologies about, you know, um, who's chosen and who's not. Jesus came to be the propitiation, the payment of our sacrifice for all mankind. And yet we have a choice to receive it. But I kind of think it's like this, that he empowers us to make the right choice. I know in my life I made enough bad choices to not really trust that I could make the right choice without him empowering me, drawing me, and calling me. And then he says, the friends... He goes, the descendants of my friend Abraham. Do you see yourself as the friend of God? You see, he was 
faithful to Abraham and all the descendants to the formation of the nation under King David, all because he was Abraham's friend. In James 2, 23, he ties this in and says, and the scripture was fulfilled here. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. Do you realize that's what Jesus came to do? Uh, in the sermon in John 15, where Jesus talks to them about abiding, he said in um, John 15, 14, he says, you know, you are my friends if you obey me, my commandment. And the commandment was all about uh, finding life in him and living out of him as the source. And uh, then in verse 15, he says, no longer do I call you servants for the servant does not know what his master is doing but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard of my father, I have made known to you. You see, we live in times of turmoil and it's so important for us to remember, yes, I'm his servant. I was a slave to sin and now I'm a slave of righteousness. But that's not a negative because he chose me to be a friend of God. Now, when you read through Isaiah and you see this prophecy, you're saying, well, isn't that to Israel the nation? Yeah, sure. But it also applies to us because Paul tells us in Galatians that we, the believer, we are the Israel of God. Not a nation, but his own chosen people, his own precious possession. Well, then you look at, at verse number uh, nine, he says, like building on this, he says, for whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from his farthest corner saying to him, you are my servant and I have chosen you and not cast you off. <laughs> I love the promise of God that as the chosen, as his servants, as his friends, he never cast us off. It is us that he helps. In Hebrews 2, verse 16, he says, for surely it's not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. And you and I, who are Gentiles by upbringing, he says, are now the true children of Abraham through faith. In Hebrews 13, 5, he says, keep yourself free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. You see, we, we get all worried and concerned and we look for security. We look for security in money and he's saying, oh no, be content with what you have because I will never leave you. He says, I'll never cast you off and I'll never forsake you. And he said this to Israel and he says it to us when it seems like there is no hope. He says, I will never leave you. And in verse 10, he said, fear not for I am with you. Does that encourage you that God is with you? That he's not distant to you? That you as a believer live in him and he lives in you. You can't get closer to God if you're in him. You can become more aware. He says, don't be dismayed. <laughs> Look around the world, you're like, oh, there's no hope. He says, no, don't be dismayed. He goes, I'm your strength. I'm your help. I'm the one that enables you to stand. 
Now, certainly there's going to be times in our life when we're afraid, but we got to remember, this is my promise. In Acts 18, verse 9 and 10, it tells a story where uh, the Lord gives a message uh, to Paul at night. It says, and the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, do not be afraid, but go. Go on speaking and do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one will attack you to harm you, for I have many in this city who are my people. Paul had gone through a, some horrible times of suffering. And I think he was just caught up in fear for a moment. And the Lord reminds him of the beautiful promise, I'm with you. Well, this is all for you, friend, in whatever you're facing. Let it be a foundation for you that you're chosen, you're her servant, you're a friend, and he is your security. And even though there might be times when we're afraid, he is there to remind us that we can boldly speak for him because he is with us, in us, and us at him. Have a great day.